Hi, I'm Robert Simmon, a data visualizer with Planet, and today I'm going to go over color correcting very high resolution SkySat data with Geographic Imager and Photoshop. It's a relatively simple process that begins with importing the bands into Photoshop using Geographic Imager's advanced import functionality, blending the individual scenes together in Photoshop, and color correction with curves. Finally, a little bit of vibrance enhancement and sharpening to make the image really pop. We'll start by importing the data into Photoshop using Geographic Imager's advanced import. Go to the file menu, import GI advanced import. Use the dialog boxes to navigate to your files, select them all, and hit open. It'll take a little while, but Geographic Imager will read the headers for each of these files and give information like the coordinate system, the dimensions, and the color mode. And the color mode is important because these are four channel data with a blue, a green, a red, and a near infrared band. And we just want red, green, and blue in that order. And using this import dialog, we're actually able to select each of the colors we want and reorder them on import. Once we have all the files selected, we're gonna need to edit the color mode. So right click on RGB color, edit selection. And it's gonna take a little while to read these again because the files are huge. But after a bit, just click on this RGB color four channel dialog, unselect the channel four, which is the alpha channel. And then we're gonna need to reverse the red and the blue channels because this is the blue channel and that's the red channel. So click there, set it to blue, green stays the same, and then red is automatically changed. Hit okay hit OK again, and then notice three selected RGB color. Then we're going to want to mosaic all these files to the destination document. And we'll just set it to the last one of these individual scenes. And a final thing we're going to want to do is remove the background color, because each of these is matted on black. So same color for all images, color to remove, black, OK. OK again. And this is also a slow process, as all of the data is read for each of these. And they're very large, plus 16 bits per pixel per channel. So rather than waiting, I have a file already pulled up. After importing, I'll have a stack of individual scenes in a single document. And I want to blend them together so that there's no visible seam lines. To do that, I'll shift click between the top and the bottom layer, and then go to Edit auto blend layers, set it to panorama, seamless tones and colors, and then hit OK. And again, this is another step that takes a little while. And that's because Photoshop is analyzing the overlap between all of the scenes and then blending them together, doing a little bit of feature matching and also something called gradient blending. And that just makes sure that there's no little changes in color or visible lines in between all of the different pieces of data. Okay, once that's done, you can see that each of these has a mask, and then we can just merge them all together. Go to Layer, Merge Layers, or just use Command-E. Now, all of the data together is on one layer, and we can go on to color correction. And we do that with Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves. Hit OK, you can name it whatever you want, and now we have this properties dialog box. And this is where we do all of the color ma manipulation. And what we want to start out doing is setting a white point. So click on the white eyedropper, right click on the image, and you want either 3 by 3 average or 5 by 5 average. And that just makes sure that you've got a nice range of pixels and you're not getting anything contaminated by noise. Zoom in to the brightest areas of the image and then click. And so this will set the red, the green, and the blue channels to max out at the values in that area. And then I can hold down the Option key to look to see how much clipping is going on. And so this is about perfect. So there's just a little tiny bit of pure white, and the rest of the image has valid values. After we do that, the image is still really dark. So we want to start adjusting the overall contrast. And you do that by clicking on this white line, which represents the, all the values of the red, green, and blue channels together. 
and then we move that to the left. Also add a second one and then bring it down a little bit. Anytime that this line hits the top of the box here, that means that, that those pixels are gonna be clipped. So we wanna make sure that there's a nice even arch. Anytime there's a knee or a, a sort of abrupt bend, that'll show up as sort of a gray area in the image and we don't want that. And so you want this nice even arch. And just at this point, we don't need to get it perfect, just get a pretty good range of values. And you can make adjustments either by clicking and dragging with a mouse or using the arrow keys, left, right, up and down. All right, so this is looking a little bit bright, especially in the shadows. So I wanna take the leftmost point and pull that a little bit to the right. And you can see the histogram is moving here and starting to fill the entire range of values. And just move the top brights a little bit as well. So now I wanna zoom in on the shadows and make these look a little bit more realistic. Right now, they're a bit too bright and a bit too blue, and that's due to atmospheric scattering that's filling in the shadows. And we wanna make it look a little bit more uh, neutral color instead of being blue, but we wanna leave a little bit of that blue because it's really what shadows look like. And so I can go to the green channel, grab this lower left point, and just nudge it over a few values with the arrow keys. Go to blue and do the same thing, but it'll be a couple more because green in a shadow is a little bit brighter than red, and then blue is a little bit brighter again than the green. We wanna preserve a bit of that relationship, but we wanna make it pretty close to being a neutral color. And then we can check that with the eyedropper and these values in the info palette. So right now we've got nine, 15, 22, and that's, that's about right. Uh, that did make the overall image a bit darker. So again, I'm gonna tweak these values and moving them a little bit to the left and up or down to preserve that smooth curve. And you can see right here that this part is maxed out, but that's really only affecting this area to the right, which we're probably gonna crop out in the end anyhow. But I'm just gonna pull this over a little bit. And so you can see these areas are saturated but all of the main area of interest isn't. And again, still a little bit tiny dark, little tiny bit dark, and I'm just gonna nudge it a little bit more and then brighten up the brightest areas just a little bit more. And that prevents them from, from going kind of gray and dull colored. And so I'd say that looks pretty good. Maybe a tiny bit dark here. And so I will just Move that over one more value. All right, so now that we have the curve layer more or less complete, what we wanna do is collapse that into the data itself and do a sharpening and vibrance. So Command-D e merges the layers, um, layer, new adjustment layer, vibrance. And you really want to set these, you want to be really cautious with these numbers, keep them really low. Um, 15 and five is usually a good number for SkySat. And I'll just do a little A-B comparison. And it's a subtle effect, but it just gives a little bit more saturation that really brings out the color. And again, I want to merge that in before doing any sharpening. Now the sharpening process, I do two steps. I do a coarse sharpening, which is a very high radius and a very low value. And what that's gonna do is sort of bring out the contrast between these wide ranges of lights and darks. Filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Does take a little while. Again, very large file. I actually have a preset set up um, and you can see the amount for coarse sharpening. I start at 12 you might move down a couple values, maybe as low as eight, maybe as high as 20, and then just leave the radius at 64 because that's gonna kind of grab the largest areas. Hit okay. And you know, working with very high res satellite data, it is a little bit of a time intensive process just because the data volumes are so big. So it does take a little while to process. 
After that's done, I like to do a fine sharpening. And it's a good practice to zoom in a little bit more and to really be able to see the detail in the image. So again, filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. And this time, we're going to do moderate radius and very high amounts. So let's set the radius 1.5 pixels or so, amount 250, and then add in a little bit of noise reduction so you don't see any extra pixelization or anything in areas that should be flat. Um, and then with the preview on, you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. And again, hit OK. Here's what the final sharpened file looks like. And using the history, we can compare it to what the original looked like, just with the curves, vibrance, large radius sharpen, and a small radius sharpen. So you may not be able to see some of these subtle changes on the video, but they are noticeable when you're looking at them on a large high-res screen. At this point, there's just one more thing to do before saving. Go to Image, Mode, 8 bits per channel, and then you can save your file. And that's it. Thanks, and I should be here to answer any questions.